In this video, we're back in MPLAB XIDE and I want to show you a little bit about the program memory view, which can be useful, but also I think it can be a little bit confusing too. So if you're interested, carry on watching. Just in case you're not aware, uh, we can view this panel by going on to Window and Target Memory Views and Program Memory. Now, by default, it normally opens somewhere down here, but I've just dragged the tab across and just hit it onto the side so I've docked it so it's full height here. Now, to make this useful uh, during this demonstration, what I'm going to do is add a breakpoint in my code there, and I'm going to run the simulation. And you can now see that we are currently um, stopped. The breakpoint has been hit here. And so the next line of code that will be run will be this instruction, go to start. And also you can see that in the program memory view that we're currently at that line. Now you notice that it says, here it says, go to start. But here it says, go to hexadecimal address D. Okay, D being the hexadecimal number. So you might think, well, why doesn't it say go to start? Well, actually, if you have a look at the program memory now, you can see that uh, hexadecimal address D is actually the start label. OK, or it is the instruction which has the start label tag to it. Now, why was it placed at hexadecimal address D? Well, that we can um, have a look at. But just before we go there, let's have a look at the code we've got here. So this code, the go to start, we've been very specific. We've said that this is a code block and it must be placed at, at um, hexadecimal address zero. And the important reason for that is because that's a reset vector. We want this code to execute when the uh, microcontroller is turned on. So when the microcontroller is turned on, the program counter is set to zero. So we want this code to start. So we have to specify the address in, for the code block. If you look at the next lot of code, you'll actually see that I've still used this code directive, but there's no address. So just as this comment says, I'm going to let the linker place this. So I'm really not bothered where any of this code actually gets placed in memory. And it was the decision of the linker, presumably, that it decided to place uh, this code, this code here, the call in it. Um, at address D. So let's have a look at um, address D. So address D then says, well, there's a label start, and we're going to call call address hexadecimal three. So what is hexadecimal three? Well, we have if we have a look at address hexadecimal three, we'll see that is uh, labeled in it, and then we've got these um, commands here. So if we have a look at the label in it. You'll see that we've got this. Uh, it looks like a, um, an instruction, I suppose, but it's not. It's slightly different from that. It's a directive. Now, it's an assembler directive. So the assembler directive during assembly will actually be converted into uh, instructions. And in this particular case, the bank cell directive will result in two instructions. So although it says bank cell OSCON there, it actually we're going to um, to select the correct bank that contains the OSCON register. We actually need to do a bit set file and a bit clear file. And uh, then uh, we've got a mover literal into the working file register. So that is actually the same thing. The only difference is that this is a, uh, a binary bit pattern. And here it's just uh, when it's gone through the disassembler, it's actually expressed it as hexadecimal 60, which actually is correct because that nibble is zero, so that's a zero. And then this nibble is six. Hopefully you can see it's six because that is the number of ones, twos, fours. So two and four is six, so six zero. Uh, the next thing then is to move the contents of the working file register into the file OSCON. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing because, okay, mov wf, that is the same, but why does it say um, this um, timer special function register name. Well, the reason for that is that in the disassembly, it doesn't take into account 
which bank we're in. So if you actually have a look at the um, the data sheet for the microcontroller we're using, uh, hopefully you'll notice that we've got the OSCON, uh, and that's what the bank that we're actually we've selected. But the disassembly makes um, pays no attention to that. It tries to give some useful information by trying to disassemble it and say that uh, we're using the TMR1H special function register, and that's actually not useful at all because really we're using that. So just just be aware of that because it can be confusing. Okay, so um, hopefully you can see that you know the, the code here relates to the code that's actually uh, placed in program memory. Uh, now. I believe that we have uh, already, yeah, we've started the um, debugging session, but we haven't actually executed this line yet. And you notice that program counter is there. So now if I press F7, you'll see now we've jumped right down to here because remember it was going to XS or D. And so we've now gone to that. Okay, so the next one is going to go to init, like we said, which is going to jump up to there. So let's do F7. Which is jumped up to there, so you can see that it's actually, yeah, sure enough, it's doing what we would expect. So it's quite nice being able to see this uh, program memory view. And it's also quite nice during a debug session to actually see um, where exactly we are and what it's executing. So um, I don't think that you're going to use the program memory view that much, but it is quite nice to have a look at it from time to time, particularly if you're trying to figure out what things like um, directives are actually doing in your code. Okay, I hope that is of some use.